name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. Today is the first Sunday of Epip, and today the gospel is from Luke chapter 10. And the theme of this Coptic month is about the Lord's support for his people, how the Lord supports the ministry. And in the gospel of today, we see how the Lord, he sent out the 70 apostles, but he didn't send them empty-handed. He didn't send them empty-handed. The Lord gave them authority to work signs and wonders. The Lord gave them a purpose to share the gospel with the world. Our Lord, he told the disciples, the harvest is truly great, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. So today I'd like to speak about the harvest and the laborers. A few things about the harvest. Our Lord describes the harvest as plentiful, plentiful. And you remember in the story of Joseph, when Pharaoh had a dream, there were seven years of abundance, where the earth would give lots of fruit. And during those years, Joseph was supposed to, and the Egyptians were supposed to, store and, and limb and harvest, because this is the time of the harvest. When I ask this, we're in that time period now. We are in these seven good years of harvesting and trying to get all the righteous to come to the church. We're in this period of abundance because truly the harvest is plentiful. Because God cares for the salvation of every soul, every soul. St. Paul, he says this to his disciple Timothy. He says, for this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of truth. All men. There's 8 billion people in this world right now. 8 billion and in a hundred years, all of those eight billion, like we're done. All of us. The world will turn over eight billion people. Eight billion people then are in need of salvation. Eight billion people need salvation. Eight billion people, they need the gospel preached to them. Yani, let's not even talk about a global level. See, Bikman, Yani, the places yani, we're never going to go to. Let's talk about the United States. The United States, 300 million here. That's the harvest is plentiful. See, Bikman, the United States. Talk about Illinois. Illinois, 13 million here in Illinois. See, Bikman, Illinois. Let's talk about Schomburg, Palatine, Rolling Meadows. 150,000. People in Schomburg, Palatine, I didn't count Vernon Hill, I didn't count uh, Romeoville, I didn't count, uh, Yanni, I didn't count any, 150,000 Hina. Wow. Truly, the harvest is planted. We have space, we have space for everyone here. 150,000. Truly, the harvest is planted. Plentiful. These people, they need salvation. And the reason I'm saying this is because the future of the church in America will rest on, on this. <laughs> will rest on the 150,000. We don't have a shortage of people. Oh, your neighbors, everyone oh, is here. The harvest is truly great. And that's why, like St. Paul, I think Neba St. Paul. St. Paul, he had this conviction that the whole world needs to be saved. Ashankida, that's why he went to Corinth. That's why he went to Ephesus. That's why he went to Thessalonica. That's why he went, you know, he didn't just go and stay in one place. No, he felt the need to go and preach the gospel. He said, wow, everyone here needs to hear the gospel. I need to go preach the gospel to everyone. Because he saw that the harvest was plentiful. 
Our Lord also describes the harvest as plentiful, but he describes it also as ripe. Ripe. It is ripe. When the Lord, he spoke to the Samaritan woman, the Lord, he told his disciples, do you not say that there are still four months and then comes the harvest? He said, behold, I say to you, lift up your eyes, look at the fields. They are already white for the harvest. White for the harvest means it's time, it's ripe. People are ripe to hear the gospel. And just as a ripe fruit is ready to be picked, Many people, I mean the 150,000 that I just mentioned, Tina, are ready to hear the gospel, are so ready to hear the gospel. That's why if you remember in Acts chapter 16, when St. Paul, he wanted to go preach to Asia, he had a dream and a vision of a Macedonian man saying, come to us, Anna, we're ripe. <laughs> we need to be picked. We're ready to hear the gospel. Come preach to us. And the Ethiopian eunuch, he's sitting there reading the scroll of Isaiah. He has no idea what he's reading. This whole he was so ripe. So ripe. So when someone's ripe, God, so wise. He can take a wise servant or a servant that is full of the Holy Spirit and move this servant to go and preach to the Ethiopian eunuch and explain to him the gospel. We need to be like this. The labor is full of the Holy Spirit to find these right people that are worthy and they want to hear the gospel. Yesterday, I was picking berries with some of the youth from a tree outside. And the tree, it has some ripe fruit and it has some not so ripe fruit. Some yellow, red shwaya and some very plump and juicy and ready to be picked. The unripened fruit is not sweet yet. Not sweet yet. It needs more time. It needs to be nurtured more by the tree. It needs more water. It needs more care. But once it gets ripe, guess what we're going to do to it? We're going to eat it. We want it. When it's ripe, then it'll be time for, the eat, for eating. It's important to know that there is... And uh, there's a necessity for pruning. The Lord says, my father is the vine dresser. And pruning, and what pruning does, takes away the distractions, takes away all the dead leaves and all the foliage that's not contributing. And we take that away so that then we can bear fruit, bear more fruit, so that it can be ripened. Some people, and uh, has says, need more time for their hearts to be softened. That for their inner sweetness to come out. They have the sweetness, the shwaya mor from outside, like a little bitter, from a little like aggressive on the outside, a little, needs some time to be ripened, needs some time to, for, to be softened, to be nourished. All of us, we have the Holy Spirit, right? And one of the, or the fruit of the Holy Spirit, love, joy, peace, all of those, are those ripe in you? Are they ripe in you? Well, uh, do we need to nourish that? Uh, yani we, can, we need to nourish the joy in our heart. We need to nourish it shway, to ripen that fruit so it becomes tasty, so it becomes full of sweetness. Yeah? Our prayer today for the unripe fruit is that God ripens them. He is the expert pruner. He can help remove the dead branches and the distractions from our life. But it would be very foolish to cut off a fruit that's not yet ripe. Work on it, nourish it, keep giving it the word of God so it can become ripe. Now let's say a few words about the laborers. The laborers, who are the laborers? Who? Because <laughs> why are there so few of them? That's what I'm wondering, why are there so few of them? The Lord said, the harvest is great, but the laborers are few. Why are they few? Increase the laborers then. He said, pray to the Lord that send laborers into the harvest. Why is the laborer so few? A couple of reasons. One is sometimes many do not want to be laborers in the field. I don't want to be a laborer in the field. I want to be the boss of the field. 
I want to manage the field. I don't want to be a laborer in the field. I want to run the field. They had Pharisees. Pharisees, they didn't want to be laborers. They wanted to own the field. And that's in the parable. Of the, the, they came and they, they killed the owner of the field because they were greedy and they wanted to run the field. And it's not just the Pharisees. How about Adam and Eve? They wanted to be like God. They said, we don't want to be laborers here and do that. We want to be the boss. And so we don't want to be laborers. So some people, they don't want to be laborers because hum the boss. Some people, sometimes the laborers are few because we don't answer the invitation to work in the, in the field. And there's a parable in Matthew 20, I'm sure you're familiar with it, where he likened the kingdom of heaven to a landowner. And at several parts in the day, he went out to invite people to come and be laborers in the vineyard. And some came late and some, and that's great, come anytime. He didn't have a problem if coming late. The problem is, we have a problem of coming late, don't come late. But he didn't like, the idea was coming to the Lord at any time in your life. Come early, come early. But the idea was that there was an invitation to come into the field. There was an invitation to come into the field. And many people, they don't accept this invitation. I remember when I was in high school, Emba Tomas actually gave us like, uh, he, he was telling us a story about one time, I'll probably butcher the story, but I'll try to say what I remember, is that he saw a poor man on the side of the road and he was driving and he started praying to God, saying, God, how come you let this poor man be by himself? How come you let him be thirsty? How come you do all these things? And then he says, I drove about 30 minutes, and then I realized, Allah, God sent me to help this person. <laughs> when I just kept driving. And then actually, we do the same thing as well. Actually, God sends us to be laborers, but we just keep... We just keep driving. We just keep going on our own way. We're only seeing what we need to do. We have our own things. And we forget that we have a purpose to be laborers in the field. And so no matter how small a service may be, we are all called to do something in the church. We are all called to be laborers in his vineyard. That's why in Matthew 10, he says, whoever gives one of these little ones, actually Matthew 10 is like right after this passage, you know, this passage is also Mark 9, or Matthew 9 and 10. It says, whoever gives one of these little ones only a cup of cold water in my name, in the name of a disciple, assuredly I say to you, he shall by no means lose his reward. Today, let's not forget to answer the call to become laborers in his field. If each person answers the call, yani, we will still be few, but we will be many more than the few. <laughs> We'll always be few because the demand is, we said, 150,000 in, in this area. But if each person answered the call, we would be more than a few. Another reason that there are few laborers is actually because God knows that many will not answer the call, and that's okay. But God can work through, God can work through the few. He works through the few. And this is part of God's design so that you could see the glory of God. So you could see the glory of God. That's why God allowed Gideon to defeat 135,000 men with 300. Gideon, why don't you get more? He says, no, I only need 300. Only 300 when I had the 300. And with 12 fishermen that don't, uh, not learned and not scholars, and a few apostles, kidda, I'm going to change the world. 12 fishermen and 70 apostles, and I will, with just few, I, when God works, he can do amazing things through, through them. That's why St. Paul, he says, we have this treasure yesterday. This was the Pauline of yesterday. He says, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellence of the power may be of God and not 
of us. If we had an army that was doing all the work, you'd say, oh, we're so productive and we're so wonderful. And you'd give all the glory. But if there's few, you say, wow, truly God is working in this place. Number two, the laborer is dependent upon God, is fully dependent upon God. Some people might think that the service is dependent upon money and that the church needs like money to survive. And actually St. Paul in the Pauline epistle, he says those who like labor from the gospel should eat from the gospel. But he says, I didn't use this authority because I don't want you to think that like money runs the church or material things run the church. And that's why when he sent his disciples out, he said, go without no money. <laughs> you don't need money because preaching the gospel doesn't depend on money. Sometimes we might think that a service is dependent on money. Like, I would like to do this. I wish I only need a few million dollars to do it. No. You need, yeah, you do need a few million dollars. That's true. But you also need the Holy Spirit. You need God to inspire this service. That's more important. That God is, he is the one, like God can move mountains. Faith can move mountains. Yani, it takes a lot, a lot, a lot of money, and you would not even move a mountain with all the money in the world. But faith can move mountains. We need more faith. We don't need more money. Money will come as a result of, of faith. The service is dependent on God because the laborer, all he knows, he knows that no matter how much we speak, how much we speak, no matter what we speak, it doesn't matter what we say. The words only make a difference when the, like, the Holy Spirit is the one that be, be it, love, like, make movement in the heart. And that is the work of God. So the servant doesn't see that he is dependent on God because he sees that he is powerless. The only thing that makes a difference is, is, is the Holy Spirit through the words. Laborer becomes a servant of all. He wants to share the gospel with all. Like the Lord, the Lord, it says, he was moved with compassion. He was moved with compassion. Right before the Lord said, the harvest is plentiful, and the laborers are few, he says, but when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion for them because they were weary and scattered like sheep having no shepherd. The laborers feel the responsibility in the body of Christ. That's why in the Pauline epistle today, it says, for necessity, it is laid upon me that I should preach the gospel. And when we preach the gospel, there's two things that go like together. Preaching the gospel goes with something else very important. Healing. Healing. Preaching the gospel and healing. Preaching the gospel and healing, they go together like two sides of the same coin. When the Lord Jesus Christ, he came into the temple and they handed him the scroll to read from Isaiah, what did he read in the scroll? He said, because you have anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, recovery to the sight of the blind, to set liberty to those who are oppressed. Healing and the gospel, they go together. They aren't separate. They are one in the same. If there is preaching the gospel without healing, it's not the real gospel. And actually, our church knows this so well. That's why in the litany of the gospel, what do we say in the litany of the gospel? Huh? We say, those who are sick, heal them. And then we say, for you are the life of us all, the salvation of us all, the hope of us all, the healing of us all, and the resurrection of us all. This is because it is tied to the gospel. Where the gospel is, there has to be healing. And when the Lord sent his disciples out, he says, you have to go and heal the sick. So into you guys have, like everyone, we said everyone is a laborer. And everyone then has... Calling to 
So we each have a responsibility to then heal. We have a, like, a responsibility to heal because this goes with the gospel. Lastly, there is mutual transformation in the gospel. Sometimes we think of laboring in the field as I'm giving, I'm giving, I'm giving, I'm giving. But actually, that's not true. No, it's not true. When you labor, don't you receive wages? And the Lord says, I will give you your wages. They, won't, they might not be here, but they can be in the after. There is a wage for, for, for service. And that's why, if you think about it, service is mutual transformation. Mutual transformation. Those who serve, they are transformed, and the ones they serve, they are also transformed. They're also transformed. Yanni, when the, the disciples came back, how did they come back? Did they come back the same way they left? Well, they came back different. It says when they came back, they came back full of joy. They saw the power of God. When we are in the service, we become transformed. Our prayer today is that we become like laborers in the vineyard. The harvest is plentiful. We need to pray to the Lord that he sends laborers into the field, that he uses us. We're in the body of Christ. We have a purpose in the body of Christ. We have a purpose to heal. Each one of you, heal, heal, heal your, your neighbors, heal your kids, heal each other, heal your spouse, and glory be to God forever. Amen.